Welcome to Culture No Cap. I'm your host, Eric Spence, along with co-host Reverend Eric Kelton in the building. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. How about yourself? Man, it's another day above ground. I'm yeah. all right. I yeah, ain't right. go replaying. Don't. Ain't no point, right? I mean, it makes you feel better sometimes, but I ain't going to complain. Go. You think? Yeah. Yeah. Let it get you off the chest. But then yeah. when you're feeling better, people will tell you how bad you, you got it, so. Well, that's kind of where we are, man. I'm I'm thinking about where we are with this uh this election, and I don't feel good because this country is very bad. This country is very bad. This country is this country is a laughing stock. It's very bad. No, nobody respects us. The military doesn't like our president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he like he likes uh Trump. The military likes Trump. They they loved him very much. Very much. Him, he, was, he was probably the most loved president that, that we ever had <laughs> so yeah we're gonna talk about the debate that happened this week and yeah you want to call it that yeah so on one hand we got a douchebag on the other hand <laughs> we got a turd sandwich <laughs> which, which, which one you want which, which yeah, one you want I don't know, man. I don't know. It It don't look good, man. The choices we have, the choices that we have at this point, it's not even, it's not even fair. It's not right. It's sad. It, it, it shows you where the country's going. Um, there's a real problem. The Democratic Party is in trouble. You know, they, they interviewed, there were a lot of people who were on the fence who after watching that debate said they was voting for RFK Jr. He wasn't part of the debate. I know. <laughs> he ain't even said nothing. <laughs> and, and he's yeah, I'm kind of leaning somewhere. I'm I'm not leaning anywhere, but I'm really I can't I can't vote for these two. I just can't do it. So uh, it's 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 to the point where really he, you find yourself voting for one because they ain't the other. And and when you do that, you really ain't got a, you know, you don't have any confidence in them. You just don't want the other one in office. Hmm, sounds familiar. Sounds like something that uh, happened last time. Sounds like uh, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I don't, I, I, the, you know, and they, they're talking about, you know, immediately after it, they were saying, you know, the Democratic Party needs to get together and go to the president and say thank you for your service, but right now we don't think you're the man for the job. And then they were floating these different names around. It seemed like something like that. If you had confidence, you would have said, let your VP run. There's no confidence in her. People don't like her that much. Some people like her. Some people, she hasn't been impressive. Yeah, and she's close to him. That's that's, but <laughs> but I don't think you know a lot of it. It's not. There are people who it's not like they don't like his policy. You know, on the other side, they don't. They just they. Just, it's like he's out of it. Yeah, there was a point in the debate where. Where he <laughs> he was talking about, I think Medicare, and he just had a little, just went blank. He was blanked out. Somebody said his battery was low, <laughs> and <it laughs> that was the exact term. His battery was low, and they said they changed the battery when he got in Raleigh. In Raleigh, he was, yeah, he, he, he had gone, a teleprompter bro. when he was in Raleigh. A teleprompter, you're right, and probably somebody in his ear. Tell him what to say. Yeah, that, man, that ain't a, that ain't a good look. It, 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 we, we, we in trouble. Yeah, I mean, tr Trump. It, I mean, if nothing else, he showed that he was uh, awake and alert, and uh, a liar. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that too. I mean, we didn't say what he was saying was was <laughs> good or truth. But at least he was there. He was present. Joe yeah, wasn't there. Yeah, at least it was like he was paying attention. Yeah, 
Yeah. But I mean, you got these guys arguing over golf. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. And you sitting there watching this, and you think this is the best and the brightest for this country. What's your handicap? What's your? <laughs> That's the biggest lie he's told all day. Man, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I, man, we in trouble. We're in trouble. Um, but if we sit out, let's be We're honest. We're in trouble. trouble. It's a vote for Trump, right? If we sit out. Yeah. So. So what? So you're saying that you're going you're gonna to vote for Biden because you don't want Trump to win? Is that what you're saying? I, I'm not saying. I'm saying I might be sitting at the house. Because I don't have much confidence, man. I really don't. Yeah, I don't want to vote for somebody out of, you know, a default. That's just not the way this should work. I should have a solid choice. And at this point, you know, I don't have one unless he steps down, like you just mentioned. That's a possibility. But, you know, if he does that, though, he probably needs to do it in a uh, Timely manner. He's well, got to do it now. He's got to do it by the convention anyway. Yeah, by the convention. Uh, but who? Like you said, Kamala? Mm, I don't know. Who else? But what are you saying to her if you bypass her? And here's what they here's the way they'll think. What are you saying to black people? If you yeah. bypass the African American. Vice president, somebody else. Yeah, who's the vice president? Yeah, it, it looks bad on their part, but I think they just want to get away from him and anybody associated with him. But <laughs> he's just old. He just, he's just—he's old. I mean, he's eighty-one years old. Uh, some might say he has a touch of—I want to diagnose him, but it's kind of like a. Then and don't do it. <laughs> you don't want. Don't I, do it. I'm just saying, <laughs> there are signs of uh, that there might be a problem, a cognitive yeah. problem. I mean, this ain't the easiest job in the world. I don't know why he would want to do it if not other than it's just a. I don't know why he want to do it again. Well, I don't know a lot of people want to work at 81. To be honest, any job, I don't especially work at 53. Especially right, especially leader of the free world. You want to be the leader of the free world. Eighty-one years—that's a lot of pressure, man. It's a stressful job. I, I don't, I don't. And maybe it's like he's—he in his mind, he's like, I'm the only one that can beat Trump. Well, now you ain't. Yeah. Or if yeah. you are, we in big trouble, buddy. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of ego uh, involved in this. I mean, you got to have a pretty big ego to think you. They even want to be the president. Everybody going to vote for me. I'm the guy. But he didn't look like the guy on that stage. He, he looked like a guy. Not the guy. That's a problem. It's a, we in trouble. <laughs> we in trouble. That might be the name of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we in trouble. Because we are. We I really mean, are. Trump has showed you who he is. He's told you what he's going to do. And at this particular point, it, Joe lost some stuff with his domain. Lost some stuff. Yeah. And, and not that Trump. So by him losing, by default, Trump gained. Yeah, yeah. And I'm playing this clip of talking about the how the standards are low now. The standards have gotten to the point where it's like, like why? Where are we? Or has gotten so low. That my hope is that for all you guys at home who are watching this, you saw a guy who's a sick man and you saw a guy who's arguably a bad man on the stage at the same time. And I really hope the conclusion is a resounding. We have to do better than this. These two men are an embarrassment to the United States of America. That debate was an embarrassment. I actually felt bad for the moderators. I don't even know what there was to follow up on. They weren't making any sense. Trump, too. When he's not making things up, he's making things worse. He didn't say a single positive thing about the United States of America, except that he's great the whole night. And Biden is clearly past it. 
They passed it, man. Passed it. Why? Why Cuomo got to call him sick? <laughs> he might just be old. He ain't got to be sick. Come on now. I mean, I yeah, just, he he did sound sick. Like he said, well, he sounded like he was under the weather. He did sound like he was under the weather. I don't mean he's sick. He just under the weather. If you got a cold, are you, you people calling you a sick man, or you just got a cold? They might say he's sick. I don't know. Never mind. I, I just confused myself. Well, I, I'm. I, this is what I felt like. Psst, I see these people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I felt like. <laughs> he was underground. Like oh, he passed it. Ain't even. I'm, I'm telling that thing started, and uh, you know he came out. He had a stumble. Think nothing about it. Okay, he's he's nervous. Everybody's mm-hmm. watching, right? Then he kept going, and I was sitting there. My wife, my daughter was there, and I, I didn't. I was thinking out loud. I was like, Joe didn't take his meds because <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. They they should have gave him a shot or something. Yeah, the the same. I, I, I like being real, the same piss and vinegar that he he had. With the State of the Union address, he should have had for this. He needed that because that energy was gone. I mean, that was, I mean, like he just get, woke up. Like he's like, hey, Joe, hey, hey, the debate. We got to go to the debate. He's like, <laughs> it was nine o'clock. It was past his bedtime anyway. They maybe they need to schedule it earlier, like in the morning. Like four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe like 4 p.m. Let's get a little yeah, early. we to be in bed by 6 30. Yeah, let him take his, you know, medicine, drink his orange juice. You know, some energy, man. We got to be more considerate of our, you know, the older people. Yeah, yeah, well, these older people are running for a pretty, pretty big job. Well, that's why we need. We talked about changing the age requirement to run the, for running for president. They that's did. that's a reason. There's a reason for that. We see it. I mean, they got a, you know, there's an age minimum. We need a max. Yeah, but who, see, them guys are afraid to do something like that because then they might be like, okay, well, you senators and you representatives, we're going to give you an age limit. Yeah. They're like, wait, 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 wait a minute. That affects us. That's different if it's affecting you, but wait a minute. Mm-hmm. We, we want to play that game. Yeah. Yeah, man. This wasn't it, man. This was like some other, like, oh, man. I miss Saturday Night Live. Did you see Saturday Night? I'm to watch. I, I man, I was sleeping. I might have to look back. I'm sure they talked about this. <laughs> it's probably they probably led off the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they had to. Man, uh, but douchebag yeah. turd sandwich. I don't know. That was our choices. <laughs> Those are our choices, man. Man, it's 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 scary. I mean, Joe and Trump was just Trump. Like yeah. it or lump it, Trump was just Trump. He and told his funny. lies. He he stood there, but he was alert. And he was funny. You got to get him, man. He's funny now. He said, I don't even think Joe know what he <laughs> said. I don't know what he said. I don't think he does either. That's funny. It was, but did you did you know what he said when he said it? I didn't. I never could either. H, H-C-U-E's. And, uh, uh, man. <laughs> but see, because what he should have been doing is attacking you know him as a criminal. He did. And he try. tried to. He tried to, but it didn't have any oomph to it. It didn't. And you and you all these all these charges and stuff. <laughs> all these charges you 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 got. Man, deliver the message, man. That was a bar. He could have killed him with that alone. Yeah, it, it it wasn't it was it wasn't his night. You had sex with a porn star where your wife was pregnant. I did not have sex with a porn star. What'd you call it? <laughs> just a regular porn girl. She wasn't, I mean, a star. She wasn't a star. She was just she was just a chick. I don't 
Oh, man. Man, you, yeah. Joe fumbled. And then yeah. now we all, they, they, they're they taking up for him. Some, and, not, and, not a lot of them are, though. I don't feel like this time. Some. Well, yeah, instead of, yeah, and, and maybe they're doing that in public anyway. Behind closed doors, they be like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Joe has got to go. Yeah, exactly. They said that he was overprepared. Like they gave him too much information. Information overload. They gave him too much riddling. <laughs> okay, I mean, you can't get too much information, man. You, you ever study too hard for a test? No, I ain't never studied too hard for a test. Oh, me either. But <laughs> I heard it's a thing. Yeah, so some people might have done. I, I, I ain't never done. Okay, but how much information was needed in that in that format? I mean, I think Joe, they know. Joe the should have known his policies. Yeah, they know the topic beforehand. He 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 knew Trump had thirty four felonies. I mean, there shouldn't have been anything that. There shouldn't have been any surprises in that for him to be on information overload. No, it shouldn't have been because he, like you said, he knew everything they were going to ask. Yeah, it was past his bedtime. Yep. It was past his bedtime. He's like, man. And it's, it was to the point where I wish somebody would just throw in the towel or just grab him. <laughs> uh, grabbed him. Like, gra- like Drago uh, and Apollo Creed. Yeah. Throw the towel. <laughs> throw the towel. <laughs> yeah. That would have been funny. I, man, I, I I've never watched a debate and been like, this dude is straight up bombing. Mm-hmm. This is bad. Yeah, and it never got better. But you gotta you gotta give it to his wife though. His wife, she stood by her man, bro. She said, "That's just Joe. He did it. Joe mm-hmm. did it." J O E. See, see what his wife should have been doing. Was like, yeah, my husband had a bad day. He was tired. You could tell his his voice was weak. He, he was a little under the weather. He should he should have rescheduled it. But my 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 husband is such a fighter that that he was determined to go out there. Don't say yeah, that's Joe. <laughs> I mean. I, that would have been okay, but people would have, they wouldn't have been happy with that either. Like, man, look at her. At least they'd have been, they'd have been saying his wife making excuses. For making him. excuses for him. Instead of saying, yeah, that zombie that you saw on there, that's him. <laughs> that's who he is all day, every day. He been dead for the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, your woman's supposed to do that, man. Your lady is supposed to stand by your side, be your biggest cheerleader. But how will you right. be my biggest cheerleader, Stone Man? That's him. <laughs> I need you to make an excuse for me. But in his mind, he did great. I really think in his mind. We talk about ego. There's no way. There's no I'm way. I'm telling you, man, some, some people can't see he how might bad have they thought, are. <laughs> He might have thought that night he did. I bet he don't think it now. He didn't think of that next day when he was talking about sometimes he can have a bad debate or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He had already been talking, look, man, you stunk it up. Unlike watching that game film after a loss, right? <laughs> <laughs> or what you yeah. Or even after, you know, the right coach, even after a win. Yeah, even after what a you, win. What, what, what you smiling for? Look, yeah. look, 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 look. <laughs> I said, Coach Jones, I used to I used to be like, man, why don't they take that remote from him? Right. <laughs> Couldn't get through one play five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's what you need. Joe needs more of that. He needs more criticism. He, he, he running out of time, though, now. Criticism and maybe vitamin B12. <laughs> and, and he'll be straight. Uh, uh, some, some, uh, <laughs> you know, some, some Cameron juice. Horsepower. <laughs> He needed it. <laughs> Probably in in hindsight, what should have happened is somebody should have ran against him. Which I know you don't mess with the incumbent. Can't. 
They wanted, there was a few people that wanted to. And I was like, man, I hope they do. And see, if they had done it, so if they do it and Joe wins, okay, this is it. Y'all going to lose. This is this your guy. Mm-hmm. And all you other have, dudes tried to beat him, you couldn't. Yeah. Some, somebody would have beat him. I doubt it. You don't think so? He's the incumbent. Well, maybe now. Oh, definitely now. <laughs> But before you're probably right. His popularity, his record, he was he was okay. But now, oh yeah, man. now he he yeah he 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 blues. They could bring uh your boy back with the hair, with the afro. Uh, Cornell West probably could beat. He could probably beat him out. <laughs> I mean, for real, Cornell. Seriously, you don't think so? I, I mean, would've, I, I would have voted for him anyway. I I wanted to also, but. And I still might. I might write him in if I go vote. It's wasting my time. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to write in Martin Lawrence. Somebody. Hey, why not? <laughs> but, it, yeah, he, he, it's, it's. yeah, that's where we are, man. That's that's where we are. We need to accept it. Trump's, if he runs, Trump's going to win. Just prepare yourself for it. JJ, man, you in trouble. We in trouble. Wake me up in 2028. If I, if I make it that far, because I'll be walking down the street. Hey, nigger. Hey. Yeah, nigger. America's so. going to be great again. <laughs> yeah. Be prepared. Like, I'm like. like ooh, this is different. This is, this, is, this is a different type of Negro, though. Yeah, just prepare yourself like they did with the civil rights movement. They sat and they threw stuff at each other and got in each other's face. <laughs> Make America great again. They were challenging, trying to, you know, get themselves ready, prepared. Maybe we should do that. Yeah, it's a different type. It's a different type. Yeah, it is. It's going to be some slow singing and flower bringing. They keep doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. Hey, that do what we got to do. But uh, I don't see any way around it because he's going to win. He just stays. He's going to win. Can you Can you agree? Yeah, oh, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Because he doesn't look like a winner. Winners look a certain, he, <laughs> carry a certain energy. He, he, he looks like I'm tired. I just want to go home. Yeah, put him out of misery. Yeah. But he's put him but down. He that's aside. Yeah, don't, don't, don't put him down. Please <laughs> don't put him down. <laughs> Please, and yeah, yeah, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> like, Please right. don't put the president <laughs> down. Put him down. <laughs> put him to bed. He, put he him to need, bed. He, he need, you know, they need to tell him, look, thank you for your service. 60 years of service to this country. Thank you. At this particular time, <laughs> we got to move it in a different direction. They need to fire him. And, and <laughs> he's talking. never fired anybody. You're fired. <laughs> yeah, they need to though. I'm with you. I'm with you, hundred percent. But Joe, man, like he said, the, the piss and vinegar. Yeah. There's, a t- there's times when he's like strong. Yeah. yeah. When they they got they they done shot him up with something. Mm-hmm. And he may bring that energy. You know, we got a part two in September. And, and it's gonna Trump, be you don't have a part two. And he don't have a choice, right? He gotta go. Trump do what he want to do. He's going to be there because he destroyed him the first time. He didn't go to none of them Republican debates. He didn't have to. Why? He, just didn't, he knew he was going to be the, the nominee. But this time, though, I think he's going to try to kick the man while he's down. Because he he took it light. You got to admit, Trump kind of took it easy on um, Biden, really. He, he didn't he take it easy. He, just wasn't, he ain't as smart as he think he is. Because he, he took them two cognitive exams. And he did very well. He did very well. He blew him out the water. One of the smartest people they ever seen. <laughs> of course. He, he, just, he just ain't that smart. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just saying he, he took it light as far as he could have really went at Joe when Joe was when Joe was just rambling. He didn't have but a minute. He and they had a mute button. Yeah, yeah. I think the mute button made all the difference in the world. But he could even went after his like he might next debate, he might go after him like personal, 
this man's mind isn't prepared to be a president. Look at him, mumbling, fumbling, <laughs> jumbling <laughs> Joe. You know, went after his son. Your sons? What do you say? Your sons are uh, a felon. A a felon. felon. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. Leave my son alone. I ain't talking about you. I ain't talking about you and yours. I ain't talking about you wanting to sleep with your daughter. Oh, did he? I ain't know. You know he was talking about if she wasn't his daughter. Ugh. That's weird. How, yeah. How? That's very weird. I thought a date or two with my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't even think about if she wasn't your daughter. First off. <laughs> yeah. Is. I mean, what is wrong with your mind? But that's okay. Yeah. Because yeah. he can do whatever. He can do whatever. And now Joe is showing decline. Or he showed decline. <laughs> he showed a whole lot of decline. So now they're like, we got him. I ain't really seen him with much energy since he ran when he got um when he got elected when he did that run. That's the most energy I've seen from him, and I haven't seen any since. You remember that? I mean, he took off. Yeah, like, and, but then he started falling. Then he started falling, just walking up a step. You know, so you trip. Sometimes you trip. You do. You do. It happens, but it's happening a lot more. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just mix it up. This, the this is like, the first time. This is the first time where we can really, really say that his age, or I'm not, I'm not gonna say his age, but his his cognitive ability is in question. But, but we've been through this with Reagan. They protect you. Didn't you knew Reagan was had a touch of um, dementia yeah. or something going on, but. They protected him. They uh, insulated him. They did, but it also when was Reagan in office? And it was at t- towards the end. It was the eighties. Yeah. Now, they had the interwebs mm-hmm. to catch everything. They do, and I think that's why they were trying to keep him away for a long yeah. time. Remember, they said they he's in the basement, <laughs> and they should have. But this was one they couldn't. You can't. You can't hide him. They got debate. Some people just aren't good debaters, man. Some people are better at policy, and I'm sure he has strengths. But debate he, might not be his thing. I don't think he's ever been this bad. Yeah. He wasn't as bad in 2020. But, you know, even Obama lost the debate. You remember the loss? Yeah. Well, it happens. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> You lived. I had another day. (laughs) But, okay. But Obama just had, he had a bad night and it it wasn't like Medicare and the COVID. (laughs) And we got, we we won Medicare. We won Medicare and COVID and all the things. Yeah, he wasn't incoherent in his speech. He wasn't. Yo, man, let, let me ask you. Uh, Lee, what, you found, what can I find with him? Black jobs. <laughs> now that was that was a low point for for Trump when he said that the, that the immigrants are taking all the black jobs. <laughs> now, when I when you heard black jobs, what what was black jobs, man? What's well, a black job? I guess he's talking about having a uh, hat on their head and a broom in their hands. I didn't know. That was that's how he feels though. Out there, you know, being a cotton picking cotton picker. I don't know. Black job. Who did he meant? Low, low income, low skill or skilled work. And you know, Ricky Rubio kind of uh Ricky Rubio, Marco Rubio mm-hmm. kind of doubled down on it too. Oh, of course. He's a yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is. I'm like, man, why why? Do you think before you say this stuff, or do you feel like you can say anything anyway? Yeah, if you're gonna throw a point out, make it at least generalize it. Because yeah, immigrants they probably are taking jobs. Yeah, they're taking American period. jobs. American jobs, period. Yeah, they're taking the oh, black right. jobs. But he, it made it look like he cared about black people. That's his only. 
Only the only reason he answered it like that was because they were talking about black people. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the black jobs. Now watch your boy, Mr. Robinson, go spin it. However, they man, them people's crazy. And Tim Scott. Yeah, I man, I, I need me a black job. You might have a black. It's a black job. <laughs> Immigrant, might, it might take it, man. No, no I don't job. want. I don't want no black job. Wait a minute, now I think about it. They can take it. They, yeah. they, they, they think them black jobs is hard. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, never mind. I don't, I don't want no black job. It's labor. That's what it's a hard labor. No, I'm good. Oh. No, thank you. Well, see, that's the thing, man. It's, that's what this country has been going through for the last. Look. 15 years is a bunch of fear tactics. Yeah. Fears. Uh, uh, lo- losing your job to the immigrants and immigration. They're going to rape your daughter. And it's just <laughs> like, it's stupid, right? And, and well, what you're doing is you're playing off other people's prejudices. Yeah. That's, what, that's all they've done. They did it during the civil rights movement. That was me. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that, that's all it is. That's all they were doing. And there's somebody. Everybody wants to feel better than somebody else. So when I got this, and if I feel like I'm the lowest of the rung of my people, I can always look down on those others. Yeah. They're savages. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah, he was beating that border to death. It was, man. During the debate. Yeah. He, he was beating the border and abortion after the baby's born. Yeah, yeah. Abortion and after immigrant. they born. Yeah, fear. 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 If, if, if the baby's born, it's no longer abortion. Mm-hmm. It's murder, dude. It's murder. But it's fear. That, that's exactly what it's right. But it is, man. I, no, yeah. yeah. They said a white person with a penny hates a nigga with a nickel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, it. They hate it. They hate they, they play off southern white fear. And it's working for them. Come on, y'all seen this happen before? Y'all falling for this again? Well, right. here's the thing, though. Yeah, they don't mind falling for it because it was advantageous to them. Mm-hmm. It's us who really ought to have the issue because it wasn't advantageous to us. Right. Right. So if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm PWT. Mm-hmm. And I think Trump is going to make America great again in that manner. Right. Of course, I'm going to I'm going to sign up because I'm tired of these niggas. Mm-hmm. So if Trump can do something to hold them down, yeah, shoot, yeah, it's an advantage. So, so I mean, I understand why they. Why they gonna uh, follow him blindly? Cause they think he gonna gonna change it, make make America great again. Yeah, whole slogan. It's better. It was better back in the day, right? Yeah, for them. <laughs> yeah. That's why I can't understand why we keep why we keep supporting it B- because you got a few more dollars in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Well, let me but. See. <laughs> I'm just saying, if he can build the economy back, eh. I don't know. That'd be nice. Man. We're in shambles. You got to admit, the economy is messed up right now. It's messed up. We need some help. We need some help. I'm not saying in the form of Trump, but something needs to be done. So my my thing becomes: Am I am I more worried about the economy? Or I'm more worried about the state of my people. What's gonna happen? I rather for my people to eat. <laughs> yeah, I would too, <laughs> but not in a restaurant <laughs> for us only. <laughs> Build our own. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I would. I would like for us to eat too, but not to have to go to the back of the building to, to, to get food. I'm saying food was better, <laughs> but no. But you're right. People I can't cook food. no way. Right, they can't cook no way. We was eating, yeah, we was eating our own food. Had our own restaurant. 
But uh, yeah, I'll see what you mean. But uh, we might as well embrace it. It's gonna happen. So we're gonna. Just, happen. We supposed to step and fetch it? No, no, no. Embrace it. I ain't He's, learning how to tap dance. It ain't gonna be like that. You know what it's gonna be? It's, it's gonna be a bunch of white poor people thinking they got power that they don't have and they might fly the flag we've been through this it's the same thing man oh yeah the flag ain't going away the flag ain't going away we see it now i've seen it like ever since biden has been in office yeah and uh let's go brandon let's go brandon confederate flags white people looking at you funny funnier yeah funnier and and, and looking empowered yeah, that, that's the thing. The other thing about Trump is that it's like they feel more empowered to do that. Yeah, Back fine. in the day, they would hide it. Yeah, that's fine. Bring it. Do it. Do what you <laughs> do. It. I may say, <laughs> do do what you feel. Do what you want to do. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. She just like all that. <laughs> Bring all my, my, man, but I just don't know how I handle it. I ain't one of them. I mean, I ain't. Yeah, that's why I just, hey, just be prepared. Like, it's not the, no, if our ancestors love them dearly, but it's a different breed of blacks. Some different blacks out there. The blacks are different. Yeah. Aren't they? Yeah but, yeah, but they're still the majority. They are. I don't think it'd be a war necessarily, but I think you're going to have confrontations. And we saw oh, yeah, what happened in that. Alabama. Might be more Alabama <laughs> <laughs> fights. White chairs uh, I mean, being they, thrown. They yeah. had the black dude that could swim in Alabama. Mm-hmm. He swam across to save <laughs> people. <laughs> Going through his hat up. I mean, it might be more stuff like that. Hopefully not. Yes. Oh, it definitely ain't gonna be. It ain't gonna be like before. Not it ain't like before. So now we're gonna we're gonna deal with war overseas and and wars at home. Oh no, nah, he gonna stop that. Remember, first day. He gonna go to the National Guard. The war is over. Oh, you talking about National Guard here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and once again, they'll be spraying. Mm-hmm. They'll be spraying with them water hose. Like I said, man, just just prepare mentally. Mentally, just prepare for. What's gonna happen in 2025? Uh, Trump will be elected. Yeah, that's that. That's gonna happen. Yeah, unless, unless this guy, it's gonna take a miracle. Something happens, man. Yeah, is that Denise Williams? It's gonna take, it's gonna take a miracle. It's gonna take a miracle. I think it might be. Yeah, it, it's gonna take that, man. It's got to. Joe's got to step down. So what you're telling me? Mm-hmm. Is you're not voting. That would be you're irresponsible. That would be irresponsible for me to say that I'm not voting. I want to and, and let my ancestors down. That would be irresponsible, right? Right? On this platform to say I'm not voting. I would encourage people to, to do what they feel. What about well, that? You know, yeah. But they also <laughs> they also Fought and died for me to have the right to Not choose to, vote. to do one or the other. Yeah, I know. And right now, the same fear that the Republican Party or the right is putting in people about abortions, the border, is the same fear that we have to put into to people you don't want Trump. So it's fear either way. Yeah. Yeah. My mom feared me today. She said, Well, if you don't vote, you know it's a vote for Trump. I'm like, True. <laughs> a, but I still don't want to waste my time. You ain't gotta waste your time. Huh? What did your mom say about the uh about the, the election? The debate? Yeah. yeah. Same thing we saying. It was it was no, her words were it was sad. It was really <laughs> sad the way it felt bad for Joe. I felt like, bad for him too. But so so does that mean that you just running to the polls? I ain't running for that. I ain't yeah. running. For that. I just can't. And, and that's that. Just just give me another option. And we should give demand me. another option as a people. We should demand better. 
Don't you think? If that was the case, neither one of them would be running. That's what I'm saying. I feel like we need to get to a point where if these are our choices, we need to have go third party. Something. I, agree. I know something to to offset this because they know these aren't the best options. There's better options out there. Yeah, but this is where we are. I mean, I heard uh, people at work uh, say I'll be sitting in the office just listening. Mm-hmm. I was like on the phone and you know they were they were laughing how uh, bad Biden did and uh, how Trump was talking. I don't even understand what he's saying. And that was just so funny to him. Kind of funny to me yeah. too. <laughs> My <laughs> it, was different. It, it was, but there was, you know, there, there was no conversation about black jobs. There there was no conversation about the lies he told. Uh, he, he, None yeah. of that was in there. So Yeah, they're gonna look at their their team. Their team won. Because their team they did, did win. They won. By landslide. It was a pretty big a lopsided. Mm, not like it could have been. Oh, it could have been a slaughter. It could have been worse. Yeah, if he was as smart as he thought he was. Yeah. It could have because I don't I don't I don't think he took pity on Biden. I just think he couldn't do it. He, his mental capacity, he was too busy trying to show how, how everybody hated Biden and how everybody loved him. The military hates him and he's this and this. He was too busy trying to do all that stuff. Yeah. And no arguments about policy, really. Nah, that didn't, uh, policy didn't come up as much as, you know, I'm talking <laughs> talking about the golf game and uh, <clears throat> it was really, it was frustrating to watch, man. I Eric, my man, we in trouble. We in trouble. We in trouble. But help is on the way, and, and it's gonna start, come with um, this these Ten Commandment laws in Louisiana. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm. Pl- I got a clip. Today, Louisiana became the first state in the country to require the Ten Commandments be on display in every public school classroom from kindergarten to state funded universities under a bill signed by Republican Governor Jeff Landry. Under the new state law, which will take effect in 2025, the commandments must be poster size and in a large, easily readable font. In a joint statement, some liberties groups and other opponents, including Americans United for Separation of Church and State, say they'll file a lawsuit challenging the law, calling it bluntly unconstitutional. As a pastor, as a pastor, this has got to make you feel good that the Ten Commandments are going to be in schools, man, right? Right. As a pastor, yeah. Okay, cool. But there's a but coming. However. Oh, however. Okay. If you guys are supposed to uphold the Constitution, I don't see how you fit that in. Religious freedom, Ten Commandments of Christianity. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. Maybe I mean I don't. You don't think it'll help these kids to see the Ten Commandments on the wall? Just kind of teach them like these. These are the laws that you should go by. These are the rules you could should abide by. Right. I mean, you can. You you do want to. First off, parents are to raise their kids, but they're with the teachers a lot. So the teachers ought to try to teach them how to become moral, good individuals. Here's a question of who's to say what's moral if you don't have morals? So in other words, you're saying the teachers may not be the best to, to teach these students the Ten Commandments. I mean, because on the one hand, you're saying that they're teaching them sex. Mm -hmm. But now I want you to teach them the Ten Commandments. On on the other hand, okay, I got to bring my kids to school. My kids are Christian, and we have this symbol. Okay, then how how about you have Hindus come? How about Muslims? Uh, How about agnostics? How about atheists? Mm -hmm. Uh, what are you going to do for their religion? 
if we're having separation of church and state. As a pastor, yeah, we we need to we need to have the Ten Commandments. As an American, and what we allegedly stand for, I don't see how you justify it. Understandable, but at the same time, these people aren't really doing this for no. morality's sake. This is a political move. Yeah, they're doing it politics. <laughs> they're doing it to show how religious they are. Yeah. Because on the one hand, you know. You got the gays taking over. <laughs> Not that, the gays. <laughs> Anytime they put the in front of it, they really, really prejudiced. <laughs> you got the gays ticket taking over. You got these uh, transgenders, and they're, they're trying to do all this. And it's like, hey, let's put the Ten Commandments. Aha. Ha, gotcha. Yeah, let me show you how oh, we're religious, and they're trying to kill these babies eight, nine, ten months pregnant. Mm -hmm. Ten months. Yeah. <laughs> so let's yeah. show you how religious we are. We want the Ten Commandments back in. Yeah, look, I will give it to the Republicans, man. They have out religious the Democratic Party. They they, they constantly are the ones talking about the Ten Commandments. And and they've even gone further in Oklahoma to have the Bible required in classrooms. Now this, to me, this is interesting. It was interesting, first off, because it really is un-American. And secondly, um, Bible's not to be played with. Mm -hmm. So you have people who don't know the Bible to teach you the Bible. And what are they going to be teaching you from the Bible? Oh, I mean, I'm glad you asked. Let's hear it. We'll be issuing a memo today that every school district will adhere to, which is that every teacher, every classroom in the state will have a Bible in the classroom and will be teaching from the Bible in the classroom. We're going to make an important announcement today regarding the Bible and the Ten Commandments. My staff has been looking at Oklahoma statute. We've been looking at Oklahoma academic standards. And it's crystal clear to us that in the Oklahoma academic standards, under Title 70, multiple occasions, the Bible is a necessary historical document to teach our kids about the history of this country, to have a complete understanding of Western civilization, to have an understanding of the basis of our legal system. And it's frankly, we're talking about the Bible, one of the most foundational documents used for the Constitution and the birth of our country. Ver what version he got? I heard of the uh, King James and what, what version of the Bible he, he, he got? What version of the Bible is the United States in? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, what version, man? They got a new version. Well, the Bible teacher, if they bring in something new, you, do, don't, you better stay away from it. Uh, oh. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, it's all a political game to show you how religious we are. And what about violating the teacher's rights? Because yeah, there are teachers, teachers who, don't, who don't believe. Yeah, so, but you're going to make them teach it, but they don't believe it. Yeah. That's, man, that's going to end up oh so wrong well this is why that's why trump and republicans want the states to make all the decisions because you're gonna have these states that are like this and you have states that want all these different things that's what they want it yeah and have their own little you know little, their own rules like this it's crazy man and then we're gonna be back it's to not good yeah it's not good and these people are they're not doing it for the right reason. They're not doing it to teach our kids right from wrong. They're not doing it really to teach our kids the Bible. They're doing it so they can say, hey, we're the religious party who does not believe in feeding the hunger, who does not believe in clothing the naked, who does mm -hmm. not believe in loving your neighbor, but we're the religious party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Commit adultery. I'm sure they haven't even really went through the 10. Yeah, yeah they're going to they mark some of them out. <laughs> They're going to mark something out, alter them. Well, that's not what they meant. 
Yeah, so you got to bring it up to today. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, that's a bad, that's a bad look. You can tell me how religious you are, but you can show me better. Well, don't force. You, force yeah, you, you can't force them. You, you can't. And the thing about it, and I, I tell people at the church all the time, God, don't force you to do anything. Right. You can do whatever you want to do. There are consequences and repercussions for what you do. Mm-hmm. But you can do whatever you want to do, and God ain't going to stop you till he stops you. Yeah. So, so how, why are we not going to, when they come to school, why can't they have a choice? So what happens when we're going to teach from the Bible and you've got this family that comes in that does not believe? So now I'm saying you take my kid out of that class. Mm -hmm. So now the kid's embarrassed. And where are you going to put him? Because if all your class is teaching it, what's he going to do? Well, these are the same people who want to take out the history of slavery out of the classroom. But want to implement the Bible into the classroom. They, they math don't math, man. It's hypocritical in a sense. Like you want some history, but you don't want it's not working. It's not it's not making sense to me. The math ain't math. They need to quit. They need to but quit. This, this, whatever they can do to fool people into thinking, hey, we, we this we're the we're the party that you can you can count on. Why? Because we don't believe in abortion. We don't believe in abortion. We we're Christian. We we want the Bible and the Ten Commandments in the classroom. I mean, and, and you, yeah. yeah what, what what really? Other than we don't believe in abortion and LGBTQ, mm-hmm. LGBTQ. What really all religious do they? The yeah, they say we believe the Bible. Mm-hmm. We, we we live by the Bible. Jesus Christ is our our Lord and Savior. But all they ever beat up mm-hmm. is abortion and transgender, the LGBTQ community. That's all they beat up. Well, if they step out of that lane, then you got to look at Trump. You got to look at the real issues, <laughs> the real the moral <laughs> stuff going on, and not. Yeah, we can't talk about that. We can't talk about that. So we know, we're pretty sure Trump ain't gay. But he did not have sex with a porn star. So maybe she got got pictures of him, uh, you know, in Mm -hmm. in a a thong, riding a unicycle. I I don't know. (laughs) There's something. Because he didn't have sex with her. So all the stuff that Trump ain't, we're going to talk about. Yeah, there's more to immorality than just LGBTQ and and being gay and abortion. Yeah, that that those aren't the only sins that there are. Yeah, they're not. But that's what they want to focus on because it takes the attention away from from the real issue. And the real issue would be the 34 convictions. <laughs> um. Yeah. I, I don't. I, that's that's why I can't. You know, you 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 tell me that hey, they're so religious. How how can you be a Christian and, and not and not vote Republican? Uh, well, because you know y'all y'all don't believe in uh, universal health care. Mm-hmm. So you tell me everybody doesn't have the right mm-hmm. proper health care, right? Y'all 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 don't believe that everybody should have a hot meal. Or you believe it, but they got to work for it. I understand a man don't work, don't eat. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people are in need. Yeah. I'm a socialist when I think of things like that. So, so I, I, you going to pick and choose which ones you feel like are the most important. I'm going to pick and choose what I, what I think is the most important. Yeah. And that's what really what this is all about. Everybody has their values and morals and things they want, and, and that's why they that's why you get the vote. But when they implement laws requiring this is what you got to do, that's what you got to do. That's when it's a problem. That's what it is. And then the Bible teaches you to obey the law of the land, so I'm giving you this law. So now you don't do it, you're not following the Bible. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Because I taught you, it's what you're supposed to do. 
Yeah. And it be, it's all a racket, a political racket. Yeah, it is, man. It, it's it's unfortunate that something so pure, something so good, is being violated like this. Because that's what they're doing. Is and, and who are they violated. manipulating? What they're doing is they're using they're using the the kids to get mm. the parents to vote for them, but the kids are the ones that are being manipulated. Right. They've been manipulated. And they can't see it. Some people can't see that's what's no, going on. Because they, they think just, it's a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. We need to bring... And you remember, we can go back. We, I mean, we're old enough to remember when you uh, stood up for the Pledge of Allegiance for, at My school. country, tears yeah. of the... Yeah. yeah. But even after a while, they stopped doing that. You remember? Yeah, they started to realize, hey, we got freedoms. Mm-hmm. And like, you can't force people to do that. You shouldn't be forced and required to do that. I mean, even in the court, you don't even have to swear on the Bible. It, it was at some point people realized, hey, we really do have freedoms. Because for us as kids, it was just, that was routine. Mm-hmm. We were programmed that way. Nobody thought of it as anything, but we got to get up and do the Pledge of Allegiance. And my country, tears of the sweet land of liberty. Yeah. That was just, yeah. We didn't have a clue what we were singing about, nothing. And there used to be prayer in school before our time. I mean, I remember we used to pray before football games. Yeah. Didn't think anything of it. I'm not even sure if they do that anymore. I don't know. I, f- I think now, Mary, I can probably. speak for them. I think they still do. Yeah, I'm sure I some of the schools in the South, they probably do that a lot, but you still have a choice. Yeah. You still have a choice, right? I mean. What happened was they started to realize, because all these times we've talked about America was foundation founded on Christian values in there. I think as, as time went on, they realized well, they really weren't. They were just they was founded on us being free because yeah. we didn't want to do what somebody else. We didn't want to pay nobody no taxes for this. Mm-hmm. So now they're like, wait a minute, I'm free. I ain't got to do that. I ain't got to do that. I ain't got to do. And you can look at the morality side of it, like, well, maybe these kids pray. If prayer was in school. You. You didn't take it out. Maybe these kids would be better. Maybe, maybe. we'll be seeing school shootings. Maybe, I mean, just maybe. We don't know. It's like a if, if this, if that. But we don't know for sure, man. And and just moving forward, just like this kid, That's this crazy. kid, twenty six years old, Julio Fulio, a uh, uh, drill rapper, was killed. And I look at kids like this. I'm like, you know what? Go ahead and put the Ten Commandments back over there. <laughs> put the Ten Commandments. Do, do, do so. Right <laughs> but because they don't, they got they got issues respecting things. Yeah. Uh, but that starts at home. That does start at home. Uh, number two, you want to you want to pay these teachers pennies. And say, here, turn them into to somebody outstanding. When they come, a lot of times they come from bad, bad situations at home. Mm-hmm. They come to school and, and they get caught up with bad kids and they multiply. And you got a teacher who you're not paying anything, who's having to buy their own materials. This teacher's just trying to survive. Yeah, it's too much pressure. And just like this kid, I know you saw the interview. He was in school, got shot at school on the bus. And he went through a lot. He He went through a lot, a lot in 26 years. But a lot of that stuff. It was on him. It was was self-inflicted. It was self-inflicted, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, yeah, we talk about a bad generation. It's a, it's a bad generation. We can't put it on the teachers. Teachers are doing most teachers. 
I believe most teachers are doing the best they can. They ain't got a lot to work with. What about the parents? parents. I know we talk <laughs> on data blame. You can't blame yes. them. Okay. Well, yeah, that. yeah. You know, in Mexico, we got some punk parents, um, and and a lot of it. I, I don't I don't know where it got to where the parents are where they are now. Because I can say that we was raised. Were our parents perfect? No. But they instilled in us the right things to do. If we got off track, right? They knocked us back on track physically, mm-hmm. so that we learned. Uh, we we try with our, our children, yeah, to do the same type of things somewhere. When when the parents started going to school and going off on the teachers, the yeah. kids start saying, "Yeah, I can or, do whatever." Yeah, or when it came to a point where nobody else can say anything to my kid but me because we were from a generation where if I was messing up, your mom could say something to me. Your dad could say something to me. Where now, hey, don't say nothing to my child. I used to get beatings all throughout the neighborhood and they would tell my parents, I beat Eric because he did this. Mm -hmm. They say, okay. And then I get beat again. Yeah. Put your hands on another... Go ahead. <laughs> and and it sounds crazy to people listening. They'd be like, why? Why would somebody else put their hands on you? But that was it was it took a village. The whole community came together and they, they raised these children. Mm-hmm. Uh and and guess what? That was with two parents in the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the whole community still came together and they raised them. Yeah. And, and now we reached a point where we got single mamas, single daddies. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not in the house together and the community ain't raising the kids because you better not say nothing to my kid. And I say nothing to them. You say something you want to. That's my kid. But we don't have that respect for each other too because some of these parents don't need to put their hands on somebody else's kid because yeah. it's not out of love and it's and not it, out of, it's, and, it's and Yeah, that's a parent problem. And it's all, it's all different. I think if, if my parents would have thought well, uh, if my neighbor uh, whooped Eric just because, then that might have been a problem. That would have been a problem. Mm-hmm. But my parents knew I wasn't perfect. They, they didn't even question why they, they knew. They, they, they knew I trust them enough to know that they saw him messing up and they got him and then they told me. And, and maybe not put your hands on them. They, want it, they don't even want you to say nothing. They don't even want you to correct their child anymore. When they're doing wrong, why did you say? Why did you say something to him? You should have came to me. Okay, you weren't there. Yeah. Because, because I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm not gonna do is if you and me are there, and your kid, little rerun, is uh, rerun okay. doing stuff, just just tearing stuff up, and you don't say nothing to him. I ain't even gonna say nothing to him. He's gonna let him break stuff, huh? Let him take as long as it ain't mine. See, that's the problem. That, that's the problem. Because that's the problem. Because that's your failure. Why am I gonna say something to a little rerun? He tearing stuff up and you ain't said nothing. But we gotta and start saying like something. As men, as fathers, we gotta start saying something. We gotta correct them. I feel like we got it's to a point now where we gotta we gotta start correcting these kids, man. If we then just face the consequences or get cussed out by the parent. Maybe, maybe the parent will say thank you. I don't know. But it, it, we're just losing a generation of kids that, that don't know better. And the parents, some of them don't teach them better. It's, it's, it's a problem. You see, did you see the TikTok video of the little boy at the uh, bus station? Mm-mm. What happened? He was like three or four. He was climbing up on people's luggage. I mean, he was just wilding out. And mm-hmm. his mom was just standing there watching him. I mean, the adults fussing at, at, at like, get your kid. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do. Yeah, guy, but somebody had to grab him, though. What? Oh, one guy, he not, he jerked him up off of his 
off of his luggage and set him back down. Didn't say nothing. That's crazy to me. Why? Why? Why are you that out of touch and and then not take care of your child, man? I mean, so I mean, I I guess I could say something to him, but you know, you know how my mouth is. But well, we got to. Him to him? You know what? We was the other day. <laughs> we was uh, when I was coordinating. And y'all was filling in bags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coordinate. <laughs> All right, coordinate. Little, little, little girl jumping on the sofa. Uh-huh. Your mama said, little girl, get off that sofa. You know what she did? She got right on that. Yeah. Th- this one is being raised, right? Yeah. The mama didn't say nothing because the mama didn't catch what she was doing. And she mm-hmm. was like, okay. You don't have a lot of that, though. Mm-mm. You don't. But these kids got to be in situations where they're around people, too. That helps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To have that interaction. Because we were at a community function is where we were. And this little girl was corrected at the community function by somebody she knew and, and respected, I suppose. But She got right on down and just went yeah. right on playing. Yeah. But just a random person off the street correcting somebody you might not get the same might not get the same energy you might not you might not even from the parent you just never know they be like you don't talk to my kid like that it, it, it's a disconnect man it's different now but that that's where community back in the day community helped raise the, the kids mm-hmm. we, we don't have we don't have that sense of community now we don't this is mine and don't you say anything to mine Mm-hmm. If you do, there's gonna be a problem between me and you. But we don't, we don't. Who gets help that way? Yeah. Because just as soon as little rerun see you arguing with them, mm-hmm. over something he did, oh, he gonna play it. He looked justified. It looks like you know what? They gonna stand up for me no matter what. I can what? do whatever, whatever I want. Whatever I want. Mm-hmm. And then, right. then you end up with them 26 years old getting killed. And your name Julio Fulio. Yeah, yeah, which was a bad sign to begin with. And, then, and he was killed on his birthday. 26 years old. And he he had a, a habit of going to graves of people that he didn't like, his ops, and, and, and laughing and rapping on top of their grave and just being disrespectful to the dead. That's this generation, unfortunately. And and that's they sad. Don't, they don't whatsoever man sows that shall he also reap. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. He, I guess, the guy he was making fun of, he was killed on his birthday too. <laughs> so I mean, it, it, and okay, so I ain't gonna say a Bible. Uh, karma, what goes around comes around. Yeah. So. They just don't value life. Like life should mean something, man. It's it's like okay. It's like they almost believe I'll, I'll come back. They don't watch too many soap operas. I, I'll be back. Maybe. No, honey, you ain't coming back. Not and if back. your life ain't right, where you going? You yeah. really can't. You can't. It's it's forever. Yeah, yeah. And we saw the interview, and you can say what you want about Vlad. He it was wrong for him to put it out. The interview, but at the same time, during that interview, he kept saying, "Hey, man, I'd hate to, for something to happen to you. Hey, won't you, you know, chill out? Because you know this is a dangerous game you playing." He kept on saying this thing. The kid was like, "You right, you right." He, he did. You right. But I can't give Vlad the game ball. No, no, definitely for, not for for releasing that on the day of his death, That's which wrong. I mean it had been previously released, but you know, re re releasing it. On, on the day of his death, because we, we, you were capitalizing off his death. Yes, when y'all spoke, you really were trying to tell him, "Look, you need to chill, you need to stop." Mm. He, he I, yeah, I mean, let me ask you this: so you capitalizing off of it because you capitalize off of any video, any video you put up, right? Mm-hmm. So somebody dies. 
don't you post a picture some people post pictures post whatever rest in peace this is the anniversary of someone's death couldn't that be the same situation a tribute rest in peace julio fulio no he could have said rest in peace julio fulio and not put the video up because that that video was to be monetized i got i got mixed feelings uh, the cap the capitalist in me says that <laughs> <laughs> says and, and, that's the perfect time to put out a video yeah, yeah. so he capitalized off it so he can make money off of it. see vlad got enough issues with our community right about now to where he, why? He, why i took up for him <laughs> i took up Not for him because huh? he wouldn't shut his white, white mouth and people got mad he ain't shut his white mouth yeah. with his white mouth in black conversation which is ridiculous right uh i can i couldn't defend him for this one I mean, it, does, it looks bad. It looks bad if you're looking at it from a moral standpoint. But that's what he—that's what he does. I guess that's what I expect people to do. What you they just want to be just be themselves. That's, that's what he is. Who they are, believe them. That's who he is. He makes money. He believes in making money and capitalizing off of anything. He's put up videos like when uh, John Witherspoon, when he passed away, he put up the John Witherspoon interview. It didn't seem like a violation then. It's because of the way Fulio died. The way he died. That's all it was. Really about the way he died. Yeah, when it should have been about the way he was living. <laughs> that's what this should have been about. A lot of and people don't realize a lot of times you 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 die the way you live. This is what it should. Don't make it about Vlad. Let's talk about the issue of these kids dying at twenty some years old. Vlad didn't do it for that. He didn't do it for even, that. But. Even if even if Vlad had waited a week. But see, you got to strike while the iron's hot. You got to strike while the iron's hot, man. I if mean, he had waited a week and done that, I don't think he'd have had as much. He wouldn't have got as much kickback. But the man, day the dude, that dude wasn't even cold. But we watched it. <laughs> oh, I should. I watched it, and I, normally, and I wouldn't even. And he knows this. He's a smart man. Like I wouldn't have watched this. I didn't watch yeah. it before because I didn't care about this kid like that. I didn't I didn't care about his music. That's a different generation of music. But that he when he died, I'm like, Who, who's this kid? Let me go watch the video and see what he was about. And I watched so, it and I'm so like got more views. So you me. gave him a view. I did. Because he's it, <laughs> it was smart. Didn't you watch it too? We're not talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did you watch it? Because you were saying, you were saying, yeah, man, that was kind of sad. It was, it was sad, man. This kid seemed like a smart kid, like he. No, he didn't. He did to me. He no, seemed he like I can say smart. He seemed like a a misguided kid. Like he, he all he needed he, was guidance. He seemed like a misguided kid. He seemed like yeah. somebody who knew how to survive in in mm-hmm. terrible situations. Yeah, misguided for sure. For those who listen to it, I I, I can't. I mean, I can't say whether or not I listened to it because I can't say I gave Vlad one of them views. <laughs> you did. That's why he does it <laughs> because he knows I can't. Oh man, Vlad is Vlad. Allegedly. Uh huh. Allegedly, I listened. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, but but let's make it about what it's about, man. This young man, twenty-six year old, killed on his birthday at a hotel. That's that's <laughs> crazy. Can can we value life? Some people yeah, don't. You know, like you know, it, it, of course, you know, we laugh. Back then you use these. You win some, you lose some. But you, but live. you live. To fight another day. You do. I mean, you 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 don't get a chance to apologize to somebody if you kill them. Mm-mm. But it, but like I said, it doesn't mean anything. Life doesn't mean anything. These kids just like like they get a another man, like on the video games. And, you life. know, I always thought, man, that's ridiculous. Y'all blame it on these video games. But sometimes you wonder, is that in between the video games and the music? Desensitized. Yeah. You, you get drill. This drill music is nothing but death, man. That's all they talk about is death and killing somebody. And not to mention it sucks. 
<laughs> it's horrible. awful. It is. It's horrible yes. and awful. Yes. And, and and then you know that they, they they do it, and then you see some of them die, and then each time I had a I had a guy who told me one time. He was like, Eric, you know what? After you shoot your first person, it gets easier. Yeah, that's what they told. Who are you hanging around, bro? Like, who a, lot hanging? Of years, a lot of years, a lot of years. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think for them, the more after the first one dies, they get it's more and more okay, it's just commonplace. Desensitized. Yeah, so now it ain't that big a deal. Julio Fulio dead, 26. Okay. Move on. His music catalog will go up now. His- there you go. And they're like, well, we'll be all right. There'll be somebody else. And it will. There's one right now, like coming right behind. I think somebody put out a disc record against him. So it just can it's a cycle. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I don't Yeah, it's bad, man. But let's move on to something brighter, man. Like Bronny. Congratulations to Bronny James. But yeah. He's a Laker. He's a Laker. Ain't nobody got the power like LeBron got boy. Not without criticism though. Some people call it nepotism. Man, he got his son a job. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. That's Most what? fathers would do that. Mm-hmm. Who have the ability to get their son a job, they would do it. They got his son a job. Yeah. Yeah, but uh not everybody can pull this one off. It's a million, it's a million dollar job. <laughs> <laughs> and qualification everybody got to do an application i guess he qualified because he did well in training camp he did well in training camp he was a five-star recruit he had an issue going into college Mm -hmm. and in the era of one and done Mm -hmm. man that that draft y'all potential they think he got potential to be a a shot maker yeah i mean he'll be there but they got a new coach and jj reddick that was criticized because he has no experience. JJ is a Duke legend. JJ learned from the greatest college basketball coach of all time. He played for him for four years. Again, what's that got to do with coaching the pros? Not a darn thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not a darn thing. Not one. Like nothing. No coaching experience, period. He coached his son, little league team or something. Yeah, like that. fourth graders. So that means you used to coach. Little league. I mean, you can coach. <laughs> I'm about to take Mike Tomlin's job. Yeah, but I said you coach for the Steelers. But you got the yeah, I can wreck the Steelers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this reeks of privilege. Yeah, it, it, it does. It does. But you got a podcast with LeBron. Again, he did. So friends. So friends getting it's friends out. Yeah. yeah. You ain't never get a friend a job? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And ain't nothing wrong with it. As long as they, you know, do right by the job, show up on time. Yeah, all the time, up. even when it rains. Yeah, I'm with it. <laughs> and that's what so, people... So, so LeBron did what anybody else would have done. Mm-hmm. But boy, they giving him some heat. Bro. They, they coming at him. Hey, if I'm LeBron, look, I done been a professional over half of my life, I'm worth a billion dollars. And I don't really care what y'all say. I'm with you. I'm with you. He gave his son a job. He hooked up a friend with a coaching job. He looks out. And you think about it, this goes back to LeBron, period. Rich Paul. Oh, LeBron, and all Rich he- Paul. His boy, he look out for people who like family. So, so, so what's the problem? And, and if this is his only scandal, out of all these years, yeah, come on, man, get a guy a break. That, and that's what people and black people, particularly, should be doing anyway is putting people in positions. Hook a brother, if hook a brother up. <laughs> that's the ultimate hook a brother up. <laughs> if Bronny was five five, didn't have a 40 and a half inch vertical. Could not shoot the ball. 
wouldn't have mattered if LeBron was his, his daddy or not. He wouldn't have got a chance. No, he brought something to the table now. He brought some skill. Yeah, give, give him credit for that. It ain't like he was a lottery pick. It ain't like he was the first pick in the draft. He was number 55 out of, what, 58 picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He got something to prove now. So He got something to prove. He got but, a son of job. Big ups. Yeah, big ups, man. And and you can say what you want, man. This guy seems like a good father, a good husband, and you and he doesn't cheat the game. So There you go. So he's earned the right to get his son a job. And and the NBA, not the WNBA, the NBA knows a good storyline too and a good narrative. Yeah. And that is a father son <laughs> playing father together. Son on the same team playing together, man. That's what that's the that's gonna be great to see. Sorry. It, it is. And they'll probably net well at some point they'll be on the court together. They will. They're gonna make but, sure of it. They're gonna I make mean, sure they, they'll, they'll never be in the starting lineup together unless everybody's hurt. <laughs> yeah, but they, but it, it's a good story. Yeah, great story. Imagine that first alley oop that uh, Bronny throws to his dad. There you go. Magical. It's gonna be great. Man, see, you got me. I got chills. Huh? Didn't you get chills? I felt yeah. a little. I had a little <laughs> red. I was like, man, throwing the son of alley oop. Hey I'm man, like, that alley. That's this dude crazy. earned it. If there's anybody in the NBA right that has earned the right to make those type of decisions. And he didn't make those decisions, but to have that type of influence, it's LeBron. Yeah, that's a song that James Brown put out. Paid the cost to be the boss. He paid the cost to be the boss. Hey, I ain't mad at it, man. I, I applaud it. I'm a Laker fan, and as bad as Lakers, Lakers weren't bad last year, but you, you know with the. As a Laker fan, you have one expectation: win a championship. Mm-hmm. So, as as far away from that goal as they were, and as much help as they needed, I'm cool with them getting getting Bronny. Yeah, I know Bronny ain't gonna make no difference on the his team, but that's a good story. It's a good story, man. Hook a brother up. Look at look at uh, Giannis, Giannis's brother. You know, like, yeah, but come on, that's, that's even worse. <laughs> That dude ain't been in, and when he's in, it's just like, why is he in? Like, what is he doing? He even got a commercial with him. So come on, man. <laughs> Look a brother up, man. What a yeah. job. Yeah, yo, 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 yo. Give, give Brown a break. I'll give him some grace on that one. That one. He did. I, hey, look, if I, if I could give my son that job, I would. Anybody would. Anybody that loved they, they, they child, they would they'd do the same thing, man. That's just part yeah. of life. You want them to do better. So man, y'all y'all chill with that. Y'all chill. Leave Bron alone, man. Yeah. Congratulations, Bronny. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, Bronny. JJ. Yeah. Well, yeah. JJ, the judge to me, the JJ one is worse than the Bronny one. It is. With no experience. <laughs> There's too many experienced coaches out there. <laughs> and, and Stephen A is too many black experienced oh, coaches. The assistant coaches that hadn't got an opportunity. Stephen A is right. I ain't gonna get into that, but you know what? Stephen A. Stephen A is in the news lately for all the wrong reasons. Oh, they just be saying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing he could have done was start that podcast. Like he's it's, and he feels I mean, he really feels like he's bigger than everything. You know, uh, they say the ESPN offered him maybe 15, 16 million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. He don't want it, he wants 18. Yeah, he won his worth. He's worth that though. People watch because of him. But here's the problem though: he done brought that new dude on there, and that new dude just as popular as him. What new dude? Shay Shay. Yeah, that's true. But Shay so, Shay is on his own thing. He more popular on Club Shay Shay. First take is even better when he's on it. See, I don't even watch it anymore. I got so tired. I, I do catch some clips. It's just. <laughs> it, it's even better when he's on it. Is it? So, yeah, they mess around. Stephen ain't mess around. And Shay Shay will have his job. Especially when he starts. Uh, he's starting to get more political. 
we starting to step outside of sports and talk more politics. And uh, it's a dangerous game, especially when it comes to this. He's an industry plant. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. He's something. Like he, yeah, he's, 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 he's saying a lot. He's a lot saying of race. A lot don't need to say. Yeah, a lot of race stuff that don't make sense. A lot of back and forth about like Caitlin Clark. He's all that stuff going on. Just shut up. Yeah. Shut up. If Get the girl sucks, leave it alone. There you go. We ain't gonna start that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, man, I sent you a picture of Chris Brown taking a picture. He does a meet and greet. He's on tour right now, so he can pay fifteen hundred dollars. You can take a picture, meet Chris Brown. But Chris Brown is breaking up home like people are leaving their girls because they take pictures with chris brown provocative pictures they just you know standing beside him so how you you feel about this first off what the problem is with the woman you know the first one first off the first one never should took the picture okay but after the first one took the picture and these other girls see what's going on why they going why? That tell me you don't respect me. But there are such things that this is word, what is it called? Groupies. Yeah. There are groupies out there, man. They want to be Why around. You know, groupies. But they young girls. They not married yet. They probably in their early twenties and they love Chris Brown. So but you make it sound like in, in the early twenties. They just maybe the Ten Commandments should have been taught in school. See, it's all good. Ten Commandments. <laughs> Everything we talked about. This goes back to the Ten Commandments, bro. Because it ain't like uh, it ain't like you taking the pictures. You thinking Chris is gonna be my future? Yeah, but when is uh, what's the name is on your on your butt? And I mean, for fifteen hundred dollars, <laughs> you paying for the picture? Yeah, man. See, I'd be there. I'd be mad. Well, the, yeah. What a girl <laughs> said. Fifteen hundred dollars is all I got. <laughs> yeah, probably help pay for that. But I'm just saying, like he he said, the girl said, "Well, I did it. My guy broke up with me, but I'll do it a hundred more times to get a picture with Chris Brown." See, you don't respect me. No, I'm saying if I'm the girl who paid fifteen hundred dollars mm-hmm. and that's all I got, I'd be mad. No, you wouldn't, man, because you get to post. That's forever. That's forever. Chris, that's a hundred dollar picture. You do realize if I'm going this high, <laughs> yeah, to go further, it ain't gonna stop here. <laughs> no, it's gonna get worse. But he just he having fun with it. You ought to see them pictures are crazy. You got to bend over. All kinds they, of yeah, they're not respecting the guys, and the guys doing the right thing for breaking up with them. Just break up with your girl after yeah. all these years. I don't I don't I don't pay fifteen hundred dollars you to go see Chris Brown. And this is what this is what you do. It's just a picture. I'm going home to you. Mm, <laughs> Coming home to you, baby. It's just yeah, picture. just it just did time to get your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, you don't you don't get to come home tonight. Don't worry about that. I have your stuff ready for you. But it's crazy what people do for a celebrity, man. Just a moment. I wouldn't even pay that for nobody. Yeah, I don't think that's so. That's all it was, a moment. No, one moment. It's a picture. Yeah, you yeah, be close to that person. You got to go, girl. Mm. You got to go, don't no, no. mm. Everything you own in the box to the left. Oh, are you going to pull the Beyonce? There you go. But if you could pay, let's say, you know, we men, we don't really see, I don't see celebrities like that, especially women, celebrities at all. Like, I don't see them like that. But if you could pay dead or alive to have a a dinner, a meal, a conversation with anybody, who would it be? Give me Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Hmm. That would be that would be a good conversation. 
Fifteen hundred dollars. It's probably worth more. But yeah, fifteen hundred dollars. It's, it's definitely worth more. It's worth more. It's definitely worth more. But man, I don't know. I don't know who I pick. Probably oh, Bob Marley. Okay. It, it was, okay. I can understand what he's saying. That would be the only thing. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, might be too <laughs> between the smoke. Yeah. Like, can I get can I get uh Bob Marley when he ain't high? Can I get yeah, let me get him before he smokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's all we want is conversation. We want to pick their brain. Yeah, you know, it's not even pick no women. Not that not that no. because not, not that I can have a can tell the conversation with a woman. Yeah, that was sexist. Yeah, because I didn't want I didn't want it to sound like that. Because these women ain't taking pictures with Chris Brown just so they can talk to him is what I'm saying. Nah. Nah, yeah. that's what I'm we wouldn't want to do. I would want to do that. I can't think of anybody else. Yeah, I just Beyonce. Just sit down and talk to him. Mm-hmm. Beyonce. Beyonce, I'd like to maybe meet her, I guess. Yeah. No? Rihanna, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We think for like that, man. But, but they doing it. They out there, man. Just, don't take your girl. Don't let your girl get the uh, meet and greet. Yeah, my, my. Don't leave your girl around me. <laughs> <laughs> but for for a couple more dollars, man, you can get some. Um, apparently, you can buy some land. There's some land for sale in heaven for a hundred bucks. <laughs> Save your money up, man. Get your plot. How? I don't know how, but what there's these people talk. There's somebody selling a plot for a hundred bucks. Land in heaven. You know, there's a sucker boy every minute. What 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 have these people been taught? <laughs> I mean, what what you know the Bible tells me the salvation is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a gift. You ever had to pay for a gift? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's kind of like a jungle fever gator. Say I got the job, mama, but but I gotta pay. <laughs> yeah. For the application. I pay for the application. No. <laughs> that, that ain't how it works. Mm-hmm. So he done found some suckers that once they get disappointed, because first thing they're gonna do when they get up there, they're gonna look for their plot. And then they're gonna be like, Well, where's a uh, prophet so and so? Who? <laughs> The one that sold me these plots. Nobody hear by that name. Yeah, well, yes. hell. yeah right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But my thing is, I when I buy anything, I want to see, uh, you know, some paperwork, <laughs> a picture. I can write you up some paperwork. A pamphlet. What's it gonna look like? Well, what's the picture gonna look like of, of my heaven I plot? I, I ain't gonna give you no picture. <laughs> I think there ain't nobody picture. been there that took a picture and came back. <laughs> Apparently they they must have some inside information to be able to sell this. How do you? You got to be a great salesperson. You gotta. It's got to be a sucker boy in every minute. So you think it's more? I mean, sucker. really? I I think he had played some kind of stuff on him before, and this was just part of. And I don't know why I'm assuming this is he. I'm just assuming this is he. Me too. And this is part of the seed that has been planted the whole time. And I can tell you this, and I can tell you this, and I can tell you this. Hey, you can buy some land in heaven. Word. Michael, do you own that land? How you selling me land that ain't your? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my first one like, heaven, heaven? Or heaven, like heaven, Indiana? Yeah, right. yeah. Is there, is there another place you talking about? It can't be. You can't heaven, be talking about heaven. like real heaven, real heaven, 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 <laughs> not heaven, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> man, that's just insane! Yeah, but we saw this, we saw this with Jim Jones. Remember, Jim Jones had people drink Kool Aid, yes, sir. David Koresh had people, whatever he did, put on <laughs> space suits. Who was the dude put on everybody put on space suits and they said they was gonna. Uh, uh, who was that? Fresh? I don't know, but I, I remember like they had these space. They died. They had on like some Nike Cortez and a space suit. And they just laying down dead. 
I mean, it's not funny. <laughs> Rest in peace to him. But after <laughs> You gonna tell me put on a space suit and some Nike Cortez and we go in the heaven? Why I gotta have on Nikes? You good? Because you know hey, the Adidas ain't gonna get you there. They should have put on the Reebok pumps. <laughs> pump, pump, pump it up. Pump it up. <laughs> Come on, man. like how do people fall for this? This, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. I, 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 it's, it's amazing to me. I mean. In the name of religion, let's be honest. That's what it is. people get so like. So so yeah, what, what they tell what they tell me is if I, I pay this hundred dollars, first off, I'm gonna have to see the plot of land I got for a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, I need to see. You it. would figure heaven would be prime property. So a hundred dollars, Pac ask, I wonder if heaven got a ghetto. It's got to be in the ghetto part of heaven because a hundred dollars. <laughs> Yeah, hey, uh, I didn't know heaven had a section eight. <laughs> they got a section eight part of heaven. <laughs> I mean, man, how dumb can you? I'm, I'm, I'm in the real sucker, huh? No, I got to pay more than this. I got. I don't. I don't want this. This plot. <laughs> I don't want to live in the ghetto in heaven. I want to live. <laughs> and they'd be like, I don't want food. And it might have been some people like that talking about. I didn't even have to set the price higher for them. They offered more. This is a deal. Man, you won't believe what I bought today. <laughs> Man, you stupid. You just stupid. <laughs> People will fall for anything, man. Like, oh, man. But that, that's where we are with it, man. They it's sell that. land for $100. And over 100 people have already purchased this. It's not oh, just one of the idiots. Have already, I'm telling you, they're going to get up there. Here, they're going to be looking for him. Because I bought some land and, and profit so and so, so it sold it to me. Uh, he ain't here. Yeah, he. he, he so, he, what he, happened to my plate? Honey, you never had a plot. Yeah, ain't got a plot up here. Uh, you might have one down there. <laughs> <laughs> Just go down there and check. It's going fast. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I'm, get, I'm good. Get it while it's hot. Because <laughs> it's always going to be hot. <laughs> Oh dumb, man, dumb, 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 <laughs> dumb, dumb, dumb. But, but like I said, a sucker's born every day, man. And they, they show no, they, they, they suckers. They suckers, man. Well, I know you don't celebrate July the fourth, Fourth of July, Independence Day, Cookout Day. You call it Cookout Day. Yeah. All right. I gotta ask. I always gotta ask the go-to meals, go-to food you have to have on the Fourth of July or Cookout Day, as you call it. Well, you gotta have burgers and dogs on that day. Both. A dog, definitely. Yeah, I'd say both. But mm -hmm. most definitely a dog. Mm -hmm. Sides. I'm, uh, you know. As, what do you mean, sides? Sides Side. for the dog? Yeah, sides for the, yeah, with the food. Mac and cheese, pasta, salad, chips. Big beans, coleslaw. You be, mac, you be mac and cheese in a, in a That's my, my go-to. <laughs> I look forward to the mac and cheese. That's, that's my go-to, man. I want mac and cheese. And cookout. Yeah. The real one. The black mac. <laughs> At the cookout, yeah. I mean, I understand Thanksgiving. I want mac and cheese, man. At the cookout, you want a candy yams too? No, man. This, <laughs> to me, mac and cheese is part of a cookout. It should be whatever works for you. Whatever works should for you, man. Be, whatever man. Your boat. I mean, coleslaw. Yeah, of course, you gotta have coleslaw for your hot dog, right? You gotta have baked beans, man. You gotta have baked beans. With meat in them, with meat in them, though. No meat, of course not. Yeah, but, of course not, but. I mean, it's just as good if you make them right. Baked beans. Then some chips. You got to have chips. Got to have chips. Got to have chips. Got to have chips. But yeah, I'm going, you know, I'm going a burger. You know, I'm going veggie burger. Yeah, what kind of burger? Black bean. I'm going black bean burger. It does count, man. It's a burger. And you can put it on the grill. Yeah. 
Man. Hot dogs, they're not so much. I tried that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a veggie hot dog. Hot dog got to be really processed for it to taste good. I haven't found a veggie hot dog that compares. So you eat a real? So I do a loaded bun. I oh, whatever. Well, beans, a hot dog. Yep, beans, the coleslaw, and the ketchup mustard, all that on the bun. That'd be good with a hot dog on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're missing one thing. All you need to make that thing good is a hot dog. <laughs> man. Oh, man. man. You're right. You're right. You're right. But yeah, shout out to everybody that does celebrate, man, Independence Day. That are flying their flags and all the fireworks. And with the 4th of July to a flame. Did you celebrate Juneteenth? Yep. First time. First time mine too, man. It felt felt right this year. It was a sense better. of community. It really was. I, I really like that was, that was I was impressed. I was too. I think I'll keep celebrating. Man. Yeah, I think I will too. Yeah. I think I'm with you. Yeah. So it, it was it was it was definitely it was it exceeded my expectations. Mm-hmm. It did. And it was a full weekend. It was like full weekend. Like I said, community. Hot. It was hot. It was very hot. Yeah, man. But they don't bought this plot in heaven, not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> not knowing. It's gonna enough. be out of there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. man. Yeah, man. But yeah, Juneteenth is where it's at, bro. It, it was really, it was really, really nice to see the community come together and just, just no, no fussing, no fighting. Right, just, just just enjoying one another, man. It was beautiful. It was beautiful, man. You exactly right. Shout out to the people that put that made that happen. Shout out to the, that Juneteenth committee they had up there, and um, and shout out to the game that came on the show. Um, yeah. last time we had shot, we had the show, and she she talked about it, and it was it was it was impressive, man. It, it I really think it'll, it'll grow every year. I think it'll grow. It really would. Yeah. But you know what? What? I guess that's something for that community committee to talk about. I like it as is. Sometimes you can grow too fast. You're right. Yeah. Keep it simple and make it about, like I said, family. Make it like a cookout type situation. Yeah, yeah. I, I was really impressed as is. Of course, with anything you do, you want you want it to grow and be successful. Mm-hmm. But slow down. Let's just enjoy. Yeah, because well, it's really great the way it is. Mm-hmm. Had a few speakers. Yep, come up. And let me oh. tell y'all, y'all people, some y'all need to do a better job of listening. And yeah, you're right on that. Now that is the worst. Man got up there. Hey, shout out to him. Robert Gwynn got up there. Gave a, gave a great speech, but people would just yapping and yeah, I don't like that. He better than me. What would you have done? Blow the whistle? Or just yelled out, listen! Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. Just, yeah. And, and I had to catch myself because what I want to do is like uh, Martin Luther King did on the boondocks. Will you ignorant niggas <laughs> shut <laughs> up? <laughs> yeah, some people they just don't. And they're yeah, caught up in a moment, man. Yeah, that, that that's that's one of my pet peeves. Yeah. People not paying attention to the speaker and really just one thing to not pay attention. It's another thing to be having full fledged conversations. Loud conversations. Yeah, that, yeah that, that irks me. It happened a few times. It it, it did. Happened and if you times. notice me anytime if somebody's speaking like that, I'm not talking to nobody. I might not even want to hear what they want, what they're saying, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them that respect, mm-hmm. pay them that attention. Yeah, because yeah. they took I, the time to, to do that, in the heat. In the heat. <laughs> in the heat. Yeah, man. They, they yeah, took the time yeah. But yeah, man. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to, shout out to Jr. Man, who helped me with the sound too, man. That's a good yeah. guy. Appreciate him. Man. Yeah, he is. He, he worked. He did. He did, man. 
Yeah, man. It's a good pod, man. Yeah. Got anything to get off your chest? Leave us on a positive note to go into Independence Day. What's the 4th of July to a slave? That's where you're going to leave us. Just like that. Hey, man. What? Oh, hey. Can you see me back there? Are you talking to me? Hey. You can see me? Yeah, I can see you. Oh my God. <laughs> I noticed though. <laughs> he didn't he didn't blur you. He didn't blur the background. I didn't man the whole time. I didn't realize. <laughs> it's all good, man. Hey man, we live here, man. That's what we do. You made you made the pot in the background. Oh yeah. You got me my burger and Grub it. Is it good? It's all right. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you get that off my chest? Yeah. Always be careful. You never know when you're being watched. Being watched. Filmed. <laughs> Even filmed. <laughs> all right, bro, man. I appreciate you. All right, man. Love you, man. Love you too, man. That's been another episode of Culture No Cap. Make sure you subscribe, like, do all those things. Peace. Peace.